please turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 1. And uh, as we read from the passage, verse 8 onwards, chapter 1, verse 8 onwards to verse 17. Uh, after we finish reading, we will pray. And I will request all of us, please read along with us. Okay, please read the scripture. Romans chapter 1, uh, verse 8 to 17. Paul's longing to visit Rome. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is being reported all over the world. God, whom I serve with my whole heart in preaching the gospel of his son, is my witness. How constantly I remember you in my prayers at all times. And I pray that now at last, by God's will, the way may be open for me to come to you. I, I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts to make you strong, that is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I plan many times to come to you, but have been prevented from doing so until now, in order that I might have a harvest among you, just as I have had among the other Gentiles. I am obligated both to Greeks and non-Greeks, both to the wise and the foolish. That is why I am so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are at Rome. I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jews, then for the Gentile. For in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. faith. Shall we pray? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you God for this day. Thank you for bringing each one of us here with a purpose. We commit ourselves this afternoon. I uh, pray that your uh, word will minister to us, uh, especially in uh, Lord the situation whichever and whatever we are in and uh, we pray that as we go from this place we will be transformed because it's your word that's going to minister to us for your holy spirit is going to minister to each one of us we surrender ourselves we abandon ourselves totally into your presence and i pray take charge of holy spirit of god minister to us minister through us and lord we come against every kinds of distraction from within and without lord i pray that your presence will minister, empower us and strengthen us, O oh God. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Amen. One of the repeated conclusions that we come across when we talk with uh, the world around is that there is no hope. Okay? This is a, a very sad and, um, you know, uh, a very tough word that we hear there is no hope this world is not going to change there is not much hope in this world okay economically politically racially or natural disasters wise environment as you see it appears to be that there is no hope and from the world's uh, you know point of view there seems to be no reason for hope as well how do you find hope in a world where we are so you know, divided, either nationalities, races, economics, all this kind which has fragmented the world today. How can we even possibly think of hope? Hope of something better, hope of something good. Collectively, together as a whole world, is there a possibility of a better future? When we look in the world today, where there is so much of chaos within and without, where there is questions about the integrity of leaders, questions about faithfulness of the uh, people who are serving under the leaders. So with lots of this kind of, uh, you know, turmoil that is going on across the world, okay, I'm not talking about any specific place as such, but across the world, this is the world in which we are living in. Where is the reason for hope? Will this world become better? Is there hope in this world? Well, a good question. We are in a series all through this past three Sundays. Uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, past four Sundays rather. Now today, this including, this is the fourth Sunday. We are focusing on this truth 
about hope and we are meditating we are taking time to understand where can we find hope uh, in this world where there is no hope there was a time in uh, the lives of the followers of Jesus the disciples they also ended up in this situation okay they ended up in this situation totally you know maybe you could call them as hopeless people what happened Jesus whom they trusted Jesus whom they followed right in front of their eyes they saw him die on the cross of Calvary in Golgotha Jesus died the hope that they had as they followed Jesus the desires that they had as they followed Jesus the ambitions that they had as they followed this guru this rabbi Jesus are shattered as they look at the cross now on the third day this group of disciples are traveling in fact <laughs> the one person who comes along with them is the same Jesus who died and rose again okay he is walking along with them and now so they are talking to Jesus about Jesus that's a funny stuff okay they are talking to Jesus about Jesus Luke chapter 24 verse 20 and 21 we read a very interesting word you know very very interesting word that they they use this uh, as they talk to Jesus about Jesus and notice the, the way in which they talk 20 and 20, uh, Luke chapter 24 verse 20 and 21 um, they're telling to Jesus about Jesus and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel we had hoped so when they are speaking this they have no hope we had hoped hope in the past tense okay it's over now we are walking towards Emmaus the village they were going to the town they were going to when we were in Jerusalem when we were with Jesus we had hope but now when we are going out of Emmaus uh, out of Jerusalem towards Emmaus uh, we had hoped hope is gone lost but then this is a crazy or an interesting situation why because Jesus had told them this is going to happen Jesus had told to his disciples many times that Jesus would be crucified Jesus will be caught Jesus would be tried Jesus will be persecuted and Jesus will die on the cross he had already told them now having been told already you see when you are already told the natural thing is to expect things and prepare for it right you prepare for it you expect and you prepare not so with these guys in Mark chapter 14 and verse 50 when Jesus is arrested look at what happens the Bible says then they all deserted him and ran away in the garden uh, where Jesus was caught they ran away Matthew chapter 26 verse 56 Again, the Bible describes it from another perspective. But all this happened so that the prophetic scripture would be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and ran away. Imagine this. Now they had uh, followed Jesus. In fact, just before this incident, they have made big, big claims. Okay, One of these disciples of Jesus, who, whose name is called uh, Peter, he was so bold and confident that he said I am going to die for you but I will never deny you that man along with others ran away ran away virtually I mean it's such a sad thing 
hey just few hours ago you were willing to say jesus i am going to die for you i will not deny you and then that same guy ran away in fact not just that same guy in fact the bible says all of them there when they were having the last supper every one of them vowed we will die for you but we will never deny you but when jesus was arrested everybody ran away deserted jesus had already told them what would be happening you know they knew or they maybe not uh, they did not know so in in we look in john chapter 2 this very early in the life uh, ministry of jesus work of jesus in john chapter 2 verse 18 and 19 jesus told that how he is going to be killed in fact very very early he says in john chapter 2 verse 18 and 19 but the jewish leaders demanded what are you doing if god gave you an authority to do this show us some miraculous sign to prove it all right jesus replied destroy this temple in 3 days i will raise it up again you know when he was talking about destroy this temple he meant of this body the temple of god okay destroy this temple i will raise it up in 3 days matthew chapter 16 verse 21 very early again jesus from then on jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that it was necessary for him to go to jerusalem and that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders the leading priests and the teachers of religious law he would be killed but on the third day he would be raised from the dead clear words straight forward words jesus does not means anything here in john chapter 2 though he actually kind of you have to understand okay when he is talking about that he is going to you know this temple is going to be destroyed in 3 days may he will build up okay what is this temple whom he is talking about he is talking about the human body as a temple of god you know you may have to take time to interpret but here no straight forward words okay very clear words very clear words that he said that he is going to be uh, uh, betrayed and that he is going to suffer and he is going to uh, die and that he is going to be raised from the dead as well in matthew chapter 20 verse 17 to 19 as well again again the bible tells us of how jesus reminds and tells them as jesus was going to jerusalem he took the 12 disciples aside privately and told them what was going to happen to him listen he said we are going to jerusalem where the son of man son of man is a title you know which means jesus okay he used for himself will be betrayed to the leading priests and teachers of religious law they will sentence him to die then they will hand him over to the gentiles to be mocked flogged and whipped and crucified everything is specific before or before anything could happen jesus is telling them but on the third day he will be raised from the dead so disciples knew the disciples were told what is going to happen now when you know what is going to happen okay if you have some insider information of what is going to happen should you be disappointed should you be disappointed <laughs> you don't have to be disappointed if you really really are uh, you know uh, familiar with what is going to happen as you go back home if your friend has told uh, somebody that i'm going to give a surprise to so and so please don't tell that i'm going to their house and uh, that person is never a uh, you know confidential person he comes and or she comes and tells you you know so and so is coming and uh, <laughs> you know expect him or her so when you hear that and when that person comes what will you say ah oh, come 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 you say you know otherwise oh you came look at this guys jesus told them this is what is going to happen Jesus told them 
So with all that Jesus told and revealed to the disciples, why on earth did they lose hope when he was crucified? Why? Why did they lose hope? Have you thought about it? In a world where we are uh, almost journeying in the similar way, when we look at the world today, when we look at the society today, where um, basically there is a sense of pessimism, um, negativism, where there is no much hope. You know, you talk about education, there is no much hope, sir. You talk about uh, environment, there is no much hope, sir. You talk about politics, there is no much hope, sir. That's the negative, negative, negative all the while. So, well, when you don't know, then okay, we can accept it, negative, negative, negative. But then when, when you hear Jesus is telling them, look guys, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. So when you are already told, you should just say, okay, this is not the end. Let me wait and see. I know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen because I know what's going to happen. That's what it should have been. But these guys are nowhere near that. They are pretty disappointed. We had hope, they use the word. We had hope. So at that moment, at that time, when Jesus actually comes along with them, they say, we had hoped. Means at that time, we have no hope. We can be seated here with that kind of a situation. Okay. With regard to your education, with regard to your uh, business, with regard to your future, with regard to so many things. You can so t talk about it and say, I had hoped, I had anticipated, I had hoped this, that, this, that, this, that. Now, why? Why did they lose hope? The possibilities are two. Number one. We know Jesus promised us of the Holy Spirit, God in spirit being with us. But he said that it's going to happen only after he ascends to heaven. Remember that? right? He made it very clear. God in spirit with us will happen only after he ascends to heaven. So that, not, that had not happened. Because when Holy Spirit would come, he would remind us of all the things that Jesus had taught. Okay, so that is not going to happen because now the Holy Spirit is not there. So that's a possibility. So they are not able to uh, remember that Jesus had already told them that this is going to happen. Now what is the second reason? What possibility of why did they lose hope? Why? The second reason that they uh, did not have hope was uh, possibly... They were looking for a political, economic and a national savior. Okay? As Jewish people who are under the oppression of the uh, Roman Empire, they are actually expecting a political savior, an economic savior and also a national savior. Maybe a social reformer is what they are expecting. In fact, they were, uh, they were looking for... Uh, something different than who Jesus was. They were looking for something different than who Jesus was. They were looking for a political solution to the global problem. <laughs> they were looking for the uh, you know, economic solution to the global problem. Well, that's not going to happen. Because this is Jesus... Not according to their expectation. This is Jesus who has been prophesied for thousands of years that this is what God is going to do. He will come down to dwell among us and make the way for the freedom of humanity from the bondage of sin. So, disciples went away from the place of the cross with hopelessness because they misunderstood the cross. That's the number one truth. If you do not understand what the cross of Jesus stands for. Now, today the world also mocks at the cross of Jesus. They say, what can? I mean, recently there's been a video. Uh, 
where people are talking of what can this man who hangs on the cross uh, by those th three nails, how can he save you? Okay, The world cannot, has not really understood the cross. Now, such a weak and a broken figure there that we see on the cross, though we do not, um, you know, worship the uh, image as such, uh, but then that, that, that visualization, if you can think about Jesus hung on the cross, a symbol of weakness, if you look at it from a human point of view, a symbol of weakness, brokenness, how can he save you? That's many times that's a question the world is asking. And some of us may also have that kind of question. How can he save you? In fact, the, the ground reality is, see, there is a dangerous consequences. If you do not understand this, the cross of Jesus, there is no hope. Because hope and the cross are very, very interlinked. Okay? Hope in life, hope in the world, hope of the future, hope of everything that you are anticipating is linked with the cross of Jesus Christ. Okay? And when you don't understand the cross of Jesus Christ, what it is all about, why is it all about, how is it all about, there is no hope. Okay? If we fail to understand the cross, I'll tell you again, there is no hope for the world. Okay? There is no hope for the world. It's not for only uh, uh, us here who are seated or those of you who are watching us online. There is no hope for the world if we don't understand the cross of Jesus Christ. The misunderstood cross. <laughs> so disciples are broken hearted. There is no hope in them. We had hoped. All past tense. You see, you may say, no, 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 I have all understood uh, the cross and the, all that. Let me ask you, are you expecting instant answers to your prayers? I will not ask you to lift your hands. If you are expecting instant answers to your prayers, it is basically an indication that you have not understood the cross of Jesus Christ. You have not understood the cross of Jesus Christ. Why? How can I make that claim? How can I say that? You see, the cross of Jesus reveals to us God's character. God's character. It reveals to us the character of God. And what character are we talking about? Righteousness of God. Righteousness of God. God is right. God is right in everything, in always, in all things, God is right. Now, how do we understand the righteousness of God through the cross? That may be a query, that may be a question. You see, we think God is not right in many things. But, uh, you know, we are right, sometimes we think that. But God is not right. When there is difficulty, we kind of uh, think that, oh, uh, why God? Why is this happening? Don't you care for me? I think you don't care for me. Okay. Why God? Why this problem? I did this to you. I did this to you. Why this to me? Maybe God is not fair. Have you heard of these con conclusions and decisions coming into your mind? God is not fair. Well, <laughs> in Romans chapter 1, which is the focus verse that we read in verse 17, I want you to think about it very, very carefully. Verse 17, it begins in this way, For in it, in the gospel, for in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed. Okay? For in the gospel, the gospel where 
we are talking of is the good news of Jesus. Okay, what is the good news of Jesus? Where God took a step for you, for your salvation and my salvation. What did He do? He took your suffering, your punishment upon Himself, and experienced your pain, your which which you were supposed to go through. I was supposed to go through. Because of the, uh, you know, all the sinful things that we are either tainted with or born with. All of it. We were supposed to suffer and die. Where the good news is, you don't have to because Jesus, God incarnate, Jesus did it for you and me. He did it for you and me. So the God's gospel, for in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed. Righteousness from God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from the first to last, just as, is, as it is written, righteous will live by faith. Dear friends, I think we must realize this. I mean, make, uh, take time to think about it. You and I will not understand sometimes what we are going through. Why God? Why God? All those questions may come to our mind. You see, when you look at the cross, the moment you look at the cross, the pain, the suffering and the uh, uh, cruelty that Jesus went through at the hands of humanity, we must realize this that this, this is the place where there is a transfer taking place. It's an exchange process which is happening. What is that exchange? Your punishment is being borne by him. That's what prophet Isaiah told almost 7800 before uh, the, the crucifixion of Christ. Okay, This is what is going to happen. A, a lamb will be slaughtered and that's what is going to happen. The perfect lamb of God. Okay, uh, An exchange process that is happening. Because God is righteous. God is righteous. He will not allow sin to go away just like that. It's okay. Poor fellows, they came and they said sorry. Uh, maybe they will not do it again, so send them off. <laughs> if you are thinking like that, that's how God operates. So, no, 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 no. God will never forgive sin. Remember that. Okay? He forgives the sinner. When? When the sinner comes under him in faith. Remember those words. From first to last, a righteousness that is by faith. You come under him by faith. What is faith? Trusting and following him. You see, the righteousness of God is that. His standards are very high. Okay? He will not let go of sin just like that. Oh, he just, he had a bad thought, let it be. Or he had a weak, weak uh, point in his life, so he messed up, let it be. No, sir, that's not how God is. God is holy, absolutely holy. In him there was no sin, in him there is no sin, in him there will be no sin. So, the righteousness of God is revealed to us when we look at the cross. Okay? Jesus, Jesus took the punishment of sin for us. So we look at that. So, uh, uh, and, and therefore, we understand this that God is always right. God is always right. We may not understand why, why this hopeless situation has come to us. You may question why this situation has come to us. Joseph could have, Joseph could have when he was thrown into that pit by his own brothers. In the Bible we remember that story. His own brothers dumped him into that pit. Hoping that he will die. As we read in the story, the same brothers sold him for slavery. He works for a, a person who, whose wife you know, accuses him of immorality and is put in jail. Why God? Why God? Why God? So, at every stage of his life, you can always put this question. Was God right? Was God right? 
was God righteous? Well, you know the story. When Joseph becomes the prime minister of Egypt, that's when you really understand, Are wah, God was always right. You know, God was always right. Your situation you may not understand right now. The Bible declares this truth. God is always right. Can you tell that to your neighbor? God is always right. Not only that, the cross of Christ reveals to us another important thing. It also reveals to us God's standard of perfection. Okay? The God, God's standard of perfection. In fact, it reveals to us God's expectation from your life and my life. What is he expecting? Yeah. You see, many a times our natural, uh, uh, natural default mode, no, in the computer or the, the uh, what is that, cell phones and all, you come across this default mode. Okay. You know, our default mode, our natural, uh, you know, orientation is always to depend upon. Tradition, rituals, spirituality, work, work, work and attain salvation. Let me tell you from what the Bible says in Galatians chapter 2 verse 16. Look at what Bible says there. Yet we know that a person is made right with God by doing the right things. Does it say so? Now uh, know that man is not justified by maybe the screen is uh, sticking away some mess verse but if you look at in your bible this is what the bible says i'm reading from nlt translation yet we know that a person is made right with god by by what how are you made righteous by faith in jesus christ do you notice that by faith in Jesus Christ, not by obeying the law, not by obeying the law. And we believe we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we might be made right with God because of our faith in Christ, not because we have obeyed the law. For no one will ever be made right with God by obeying the law you see humanity has this very uh, natural uh, no default mode the default mode is do good be good and uh, think good you know just do good 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 okay and then you will become good well god is the creator no he knows what we are inside out he knows okay just because if my external things are doing good doesn't mean that i am good within okay who am i inside god knows very well therefore god cancelled that mode only totally the default mode of traditions traditions rituals laws rules regulations Okay, all those things which the Bible talks of as observing the law. Know that man is not justified by observing the law. So, I observe the law. I observe certain rules and regulations. I observe certain rituals. Then I will become justified. That is, I become right with God. Bible says, no. Never. Never. You are not going to be made right with God by your good works. In fact, the Bible says, your good works are like filthy rags. Remember that verse? No? Your good works are like filthy rags. Not worth. It's just use and discard. That's all. It's not worth. It's not something you, uh, you know, adorn and oh, you, you know, take it around. No. Romans chapter 3 verse 20. Look at what the Bible says. For no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. Okay. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. This is the reality. This is the reality. So, the cross of Christ reveals to us God's standard and the standard is perfection. Now, when... Uh, 
we think that I am pleasing God by doing good works, hope dies. Hope dies. Because this is reality, my friends. You know, this is the truth of the Bible. You, there is a never ending queue of people who want to do good works. But in spite of all those efforts they make, there is emptiness, there is shallowness, there is a dryness, there is no hope. Why? Because good works are not for the purpose of giving you hope. What gives you hope? What gives you hope? As the Bible says, therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Okay? So how? What is the way? What is the way? As we read in Galatians, in chapter 2 and verse 16, now, let's remember that, that we are uh, not made right with God because of our good works, but rather, based on what we read in, in, uh, uh, in Romans chapter 1 verse 17, we are made right with God by our faith in Jesus Christ. So, what, do, what about our good works then? Our good works is a result of our faith in Jesus. Our good works are a result of our following Jesus. Our good works are not going to save us. Our good works are not going to take us to heaven. Our good works are a result of the fact that we believe in Jesus Christ and follow him. Okay, That's the one which is going to make us right with God. No. It should be very, very shocking to many of us. In fact, I can see some of you are looking curiously. What are you talking? I mean, uh, should I do good works or no then? <laughs> Martin Luther, who was a theological student, okay, when he was a theological student, he came across this scripture. Galatians chapter 2 verse 16 and especially Romans chapter 3 verse 20. He was shocked. He was shocked. He said, what are you talking? That I don't have to do any penance. I don't have to do fasting and praying. I don't have to do anything. Just do nothing. But only put my faith in Jesus and that makes me justified and right before God. Yes, sir. That's what the Bible says. That this very verse, he, he heard it in fact. The righteous shall live by faith. Verse 17 in Romans chapter 1 verse 17. The righteous uh, will live by faith. This word that you are made righteous and you will live by faith is something which he heard by uh, uh, when he was heading towards uh, the, the place where he was about to go and Kiss the ring of the uh, senior pontiff of his faith community. He was heading towards that, but then when he when when he has dis he is disturbed by these words, he is totally shocked. You know, I am not going to be made righteous by the laws that I keep. Yes, no, your 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 righteous deeds are like filthy rags that they will not fetch you anything. Your righteousness is the result of your faith in Jesus Christ. Because why? Why Jesus? Why Jesus? Simple. God's standard for righteousness is perfection. Okay? That's why Jesus. Perfection. Nothing less than perfection. So how do we become perfect? Our, our, path, our, our journey towards perfection is only in following Jesus. Our faith in Jesus. Following Jesus. So here... He was able to hear that voice as well and, uh, you know, uh, respond to that. He stood up from that place, walked out, and ultimately uh, established what we call, you know, the Protestant faith or Protestant church. But then, when you understand the cross, the cross, this is what it symbolizes. You know, please make effort. This is what the cross indicates for us. It reveals to us God's character, a righteous God. It reveals to us God's standard, which is perfection. Okay. Also, it reveals to us the wrath of God. What makes us say that? See, 
it's not just god is angry in in just uh, mood is just angry mood no his anger is in action okay so when the anger of god is in action he gives us up to sinful things okay you are given up situation that's what we read in the same chapter when you read from verse 24 therefore god gave them up to the lusts of their hearts to impurity to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served a creature rather than the creator who is a blessed forever and ever. So here is God. God gives up. When God gives up in anger in our life, when God gives up, when, God's, when God gives up on me and you, what happens? Sin will take charge. And we will engage in sinful things. That's what the Bible says, verse 24. Romans chapter 1 verse 24. And uh, look at this passage here. Look at this very important truth here. How, how you know, the, God, the cross also reveals to us the wrath of God. You know, by, in action, okay. It's not in theory. God's anger was poured on Jesus so that God's righteousness could be poured on you and me. That's the exchange process that I've been talking about. Okay. When I put my faith in Jesus, His righteousness is poured on, on me. When I put my faith in Jesus, His righteousness is poured on me. When I put my faith in Jesus, my punishment was poured on Him. So when I look at the cross, I understand this. It was me who should have been died, dead in that manner. Okay. It's me who should have been punished for the sins like that. So, when you don't understand the cross in this way, as the Bible tells us, hope dies. There is no hope. So, hope died in disciples when they saw God was right. Okay, God was right. God was righteous. God was... You know, holy God was, uh, you know, in fact, in the process of accomplishing his plan uh, very clearly. So, uh, it's, it's important for us. You, if we want to have hope in our life, we must understand the meaning of the cross. If you and I don't understand the meaning of the cross, we will not have hope in life. It's something like this guy who came to home and told, Oh, uh, I, I was coming through this passage, I heard this noise. And his wife asked, what noise? This fellow was crying, screaming. I said, what he was screaming? Help, thief, help, thief. Then I laughed at him and came. His wife asked, why? Because how can a thief help? How can a thief help? You totally misunderstood the message, sir. You totally misunderstood the message. When you totally misunderstand the message, I mean, it will show in your action. Okay? And very specially, one of the most important things that will be evident is no hope. What am I basing this statement on? Disciples. Followers of Jesus. They misunderstood the cross they became hopeless people. They lost hope. They have no hope in life. We had hoped. That's, their, that's how they are talking about. Now, not only the cross in terms of the, uh, 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 you know, the meaning of it, but also we need to understand cross and its message. That's also very important. Okay? You see, in Romans chapter 1 verse 17 as we read, we will come back to that verse again and again. I am uh, you know, uh, uh, giving you a few more thoughts over there. For in it, the cross of Jesus and the gospel of Jesus, for in it, uh, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. From faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Faith, faith, faith. Notice three times that word faith repeats. We must understand the cross and its message 
is not about your works. Works are the consequence of your faith. Okay? Faith, by faith and through faith. That's a very important word. From faith, for faith. By faith and through faith. This is the message. How are you saved? By faith and from faith and through faith. Not by works at all. Okay? Not by works at all. Jesus paid our debt. Jesus paid our debt and provided an unlimited account of grace in him. Okay? Just like we have different different accounts in the bank, Jesus paid for us an account of grace. So every time we come to God's presence, when we stand, we stand under that grace. Okay, Not by the works that we did. Lord, I did this to you. I did for this for your kingdom. No, 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 no. That's not going to work. An unlimited account of grace is available for us when we come in God's presence. Through faith, when I use the word through faith, what do I mean? Dear friends, God is interested in changing us not from external stuff, not this external stuff. You know? The external stuff is again goes by rituals, traditions, laws, rules, regulations. That's all. Uh, that's the way the world operates. Okay? In fact, this concept called a religion itself operates on rules, regulations, rituals, traditions and all that. But we are talking nowhere about religion here. We are talking about a relationship with God. Okay? And this relationship operates on, not on this external stuff. It works from within. God is interested in changing us from inside out. Okay? Not from outside in. It's from inside out. Okay? It's not like many a people come to conclusion that this or that, you know, this, is, this you wear, this you don't wear, the, this you do, this you don't do. No, 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 no. What are you doing? You're just trying to change the external stuff. But faith is a matter of insight, something that is happening inside. Through faith, God wants to help us understand the gospel is this. The message of the cross is this. Faith in him. Faith in him. If you just have faith in him, you are going to be saved. You know, remember this story where Moses and this community of Israelites as they are coming out from Egypt. There is a sinful uh, thing that has happened over there and uh, uh, there are snakes that are you know, striking the people. And then the stray snakes are uh, you know, killing people. And what does, uh, when he approaches God, God provides him a solution. Raise up a cross upon that hang the snake. Okay. The, the brass or the copper snake that hung, anybody who looks at it will be healed. You remember that story from the Old Testament. Anybody who looks at it by faith will be healed. And that's exactly what happened. And that's exactly what happens even now. That when we put our faith, Jesus, you died for me. You took the punishment of sin upon yourself. And so I put my faith in you. So hope dies when we ignore God is right. Hope dies when we ignore God's truth. That it's by faith. And uh, when, when we say that in Romans chapter 5, was 2 to uh, 2 and uh, uh, 2 to 5 this is what we read because of our faith Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory imagine that we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strength strengthens us, strengthens our confident hope of salvation. You see, endurance results in character, character results in hope. So that's what the Bible is telling. So when we uh, have this faith 
in the message of the cross of what uh, God is up to through all our trials and difficulties we may not understand why this difficulty is going on but have faith in the fact that God is we are in God's classroom God is at work within us and that um, always God is right and God is in control okay that's the confidence we will have here so the cross and its message the message is of faith okay so that's where we kind of have uh, hope rebuilding in our lives even amidst trials and difficulties even amidst most painful thing hope builds within our life because we have this confidence that because of our faith we are in God's classroom okay and in his classroom we are going through endurance test we are going through you know character test and we are going through you know the consequence of what is happening is that hope 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 in life hope in life okay uh, that's a very very important thing a very very important thing one fellow said I want to be a millionaire just like my dad okay just like my dad and uh, uh, the other guy asked him so wow so your dad uh, uh, dad is a millionaire uh, that fellow answered no but he always wanted to be okay he always wanted to be well that's not how it is here when we say of being saved being given hope you always wanted to be hope we are on, always wanted to have hope no you see the life that changed in the disciples once they came to know Jesus is risen once they understood the cross once they understood that at the cross it was they who should have died but Jesus died for them once they understood the cross of Jesus Christ they were willing to die for that Jesus you know they knew that this is worth it this is life this is hope this is not we know that life is not just limited to this earthly existence even as we die even as we you know that breath is gone we know something eternal greater Jesus said I'm going to prepare mansions for you okay that's what we are heading towards <laughs> important so cross we must understand the cross of Christ we must understand cross and its message we must understand not only that cross and its mission is also something we must understand why do I say that you see we must make efforts to do so uh, to make efforts to do so what do I mean uh, you know understand the mission of the cross of Jesus see Jesus used the disciples that did not understand his mission do you remember that he told them this is what's going to happen this is what's going to happen this is what's going to happen when that started happening they ran away because basically they did not understand you know what even in when they did not understand God used them that's the grace of God okay and that's the reality for you and me today some of us may not understand what we are doing in the way you are helping in ministry in the way you are involving in God's work you may not understand but the thing is when God is using you he knows what is the mission he is up to. Hallelujah. He is up to. He, he has a mission. He has a purpose. He will work through. And that's amazing. It's not the goodness of these disciples. The greatness of his disciples that they found. Wow. These guys are a, a very good guys. They have done excellent so that we use them. No, 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 no. That's not how it is. So. See. The world does not understand the cross. But we are given a mission by Jesus to share. And what is the message of the cross? All of us are accepted. Okay? Rich or poor. Educated or uneducated. Whatever our background. We are all accepted. Whatever our background. From every, any part of the world we are accepted before God why how what makes me say that please remember in in the earlier thoughts which i was mentioning i said your good works are as filthy rags because 
what happens if you have more money you can do more good works okay what about the poor people then they are going to hell if god would say only those who do good works which means that you need to acc accumulate lots of money to do good works you have to accumulate lots of money to do good works so hook or crook you accumulate money and do good works so that you'll fetch heaven that's unfair god so that god knew that he said no good works cancel them cancel them what makes you know look at this you are accepted at uh, before uh, god across you know when when we say that what do we mean not just your good works even race and color and backgrounds you know the society today is divided on this this is high this is low you know when we stand before the cross of jesus christ it's a flat ground okay i stand on flat ground each one of us will stand on flat ground and thousands of years ago whoever whatever saintly life they may have lived they, we all will stand on a straight flat ground before god the one who is worthy exalted above all before him all color all caste all religion all uh, economic economic background everybody we will stand on a flat ground god does not make any differentiation based on rich poor educated uneducated nothing when we stand before god we stand on a flat ground that's a good news <laughs> maybe english service you guys don't understand that or maybe you don't value that okay i know that uh, you should have heard what the kannada service people were telling they were excited hallelujah they were telling you know because everybody is accepted before god the good news of the gospel of jesus christ is this everybody everybody is accepted before him hallelujah hallelujah you know we must recognize this and that's what the cross community the mission of the cross is from all caste color creed language nation nationality everybody everybody is accepted before god so this is what we do when we lift jesus high you know the cross of jesus is lifted up he will draw all men unto him is what we street you know and uh, to the world which has no hope this is only the message of hope that we offer okay this is the only message of hope and you and i are the ambassadors of this truth okay our message is this jesus loves you jesus died for you jesus invites you when you trust and follow him he makes you his own child as a result of which you have hope in this world hallelujah you have hope in this world so therefore galatians chapter 6 verse 14 last verse for today i want you to notice this is what the bible says paul he says this concluding as for me may i never boast about anything except the cross of our lord jesus christ our boasting is only this people may laugh at the cross people may mock at the cross and say what this person who hung hang there helplessly what can he do what can he do we know what he can do hallelujah we know what he can do this is the message of the cross that by faith this is the message of the cross what can he do on the cross the hope to the world the hope for the world is that we see on the cross the righteousness of god the perfection of god the wrath of god all dealt with at the cross of calvary oh so the mission of the cross is this all of us are accepted red and yellow black and white we are all god's children remember that song you know red and yellow black and white whatever our background whatever our uh, situation we are all accepted dear friends this is the very very important message today you want hope do you desire to have hope come to the cross of christ come to the cross of christ to the world today when they see oh disaster 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 
ethics are not there values are not there morals are not there character is not there day by day things are going bad to worse bad to worse bad to worse what do you expect sir in fact there is no much of a hope in the world where there is no effort to make uh, effort to understand the cross of christ okay when you understand the cross of christ what does it happen yes he is coming jesus is coming back again okay he is going to come back and take us home and he talks of what mansions in glory okay he's talking of mansions in glory and what's that you know where the streets are paved with gold jesus said i am going to prepare a house for you mansion for you okay that's our hope that's where we uh, you know are heading towards but today you know uh, many a times we lack this as we live in this world we you know live with hopelessness you make effort you you do religion you do spirituality you do uh, lots of uh, decisions but there is no hope in your life and uh, the word of god helps us today typical similar situation of the disciples of christ when they saw jesus hung on the cross their hope was gone but when they understood the meaning of the cross the message of the cross and the mission of the cross they were willing to die no more fear of death at all no fear of death at all today as we bow down our heads i call i invite you today to take time to reflect upon this truth have you made efforts to understand the cross of christ have you made efforts to understand what god wants to achieve in and through your life dear friends it's not about the things that we see as we see in the world there is no reason for hope in the world look is there hope you ask anybody there is no reason for hope in the world disciples found hope how when they may when they understood the cross when they understood jesus when they followed jesus so this all three four weeks we made effort to understand how hope waits how hope uh, needs an environment what hope is what hope is not as we conclude this afternoon this is the final uh, important question that you and i must understand have you understood jesus's cross we had hoped for was the question the disciples said we had hoped for but then later we see they were willing to live and die for that jesus because they found hope in him so today i invite you your good works your spirituality will not fetch you hope will not give you hope your hope is dependent on the one who loved you so much who was willing to die for you on the cross of calvary offering his righteousness to you taking your sinfulness upon himself have faith in him have faith in him and let that exchange process begin in your life loving gracious heavenly father we thank you god for this beautiful afternoon as we meditated upon your word of which apostle paul was able to say i am not ashamed of the gospel of jesus christ for it is the power of god yes lord true it's only in the gospel of jesus christ 
is the power of god power of transformation power of transformation inside out of oh god help each one of us experience it holy spirit you have been ministering to each one of us today we thank you for your word i pray through this new month that we will step in tomorrow that this truth will grip, grip us oh god and we will walk by that confidence in your attained and accomplished work on the cross of christ so we commit ourselves we thank you very much for speaking in and through your word i pray for those who have come with trouble i pray for your healing hand upon them i pray for peace to pour out in their hearts i pray that they will experience the favor of god in a supernatural way may your name be exalted and glorified we thank you and we praise you in jesus precious and mighty name we pray amen now the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the fellowship and communion of the holy spirit may rest and abide upon our lives now and forevermore amen